John, how are you today? I'm doing well. I was watching uh, the video, a, a little bit of the video from the last time I was on, and realized that uh, a whole bunch of the time I'm like all squinty, and <laughs> it, it occurred to me that these bright lights I've been aiming at the rest of you all these years are, are bright. Oh, we've gotten <laughs> used to it. But also, uh, you know, people are going to be critical of you like they're critical of all of us. Uh, and, you know, it gets actually very easy very quickly. So, okay. uh, you know, don't, don't be nervous. <laughs> I'll try not to be. But I'll try not to be quite so squinty this time. Right. So bear with me. You'll do great. Thanks. Uh, anything on your mind today? Well, I wanted to just follow up a little bit. The last time I was on, I talked about uh, how I was raised in the Unitarian Universalist Church. And I thought I'd come back and just give a really brief kind of overview of that because we do get some email from people. Oh, I've, I've heard that a lot of atheists go to UU churches. Uh, what's that all about? Um, so, so Unitarian and Universalism really ar arose as two... Uh, Excuse me a minute. I have to hang up on Corey in Schenectady. Not talking to him. <laughs> Bye, Corey. Uh, you, uh, two Christian heresy. So Unitarianism was the, was God is one, not three, and that was kind of settled back at the Council of Nicaea in the fourth century. But they, uh, uh, my mom, who went to seminary, used to tell me that they actually fought each other with brick bats. God is one. No, God is three. God is one. God is three. Uh, God is three ended up winning, but Unitarianism kind of persisted um, throughout the centuries into modern times. Universalism, on the other hand, was uh, the idea that, n that nobody goes to hell, that there's universal salvation. Um, and that also was, was considered a heresy. And universalism, I'm told, was actually the largest denomination in the United States in the 19th century. And those were the years when uh, Ingersoll was, was traveling around giving lectures to packed audiences, and uh, their numbers dwindled in the 1900s. And so they followed separate paths. Uh, Unitarianism was real big in the Northeast and Massachusetts in particular. Excuse me. <coughs> um, so they ended up merging in, <coughs> excuse me, they ended up merging in 1961 um, and became the Unitarian Universalist Association. Uh, as far as the church goes, they have no creed, and that's why uh, a lot of atheists end up in UU churches. There's no creed or statement of beliefs. They have instead what they call seven principles and purposes that the congregations agree to affirm and promote, and those are things like uh, we affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person, for example. Uh, but since there's no creed, <clears throat> you'll find You'll find liberal Christians in UU churches. You'll find uh, atheists and humanists. You'll find Buddhists. You'll find uh, earth-centered spirituality like paganism and yeah, um, uh, Wicca. I, I uh, spent a few years of my childhood growing up in Auburn, Alabama, where there was certainly no atheist group. But there, but my parents took me to a universal uh, uh, to a Unitarian church, uh, and it was a fine substitute. I made a lot of friends there. Yeah, and so that's, a, that's an opportunity for community. Um, so it's, it's sort of a tolerant amalgam of people with different belief systems, um, and, and it's very much a church in the sense of having regular church services. And, you know, I think, so if you ask why would an atheist might want to go to a, a UU church, um, some people just want the church experience. They want to sing hymns and they want to get together and they want to drink coffee afterwards and socialize and they want to hear some kind of inspiring message which could be a sermon or it could sort of be a lecture it's you know really depends on the church and the day um, for example I used to sing in the choir and I enjoyed that a lot and when ACA gets a choir I'll I'll, I'll be right there um, I can't wait to preach to them <laughs> yeah there you go um, Sometimes you, uh, spouses might have, you know, you might have a, uh, an atheist uh, married to a, a uh, Christian or a, a Jew or somebody who's different belief systems or a Christian and a Jew or, you know, any combination of the above. 
uh, a lot of spouses who differ in their um, religious beliefs might end up at a UU U -U church because they, you know, they want to find a place they can go together uh, without having to kind of uh, pretend they're somebody they're not. Uh, one big reason is religious education for children. They have a good religious education program. Uh, a lot of people want their kids to learn about other religions in kind of a non-biased fashion to sort of inoculate them against society because we, we live in a, a uh, religious society and it, it helps to kind of be religiously literate. Uh, so, you know, the old joke goes, what do you call an atheist with children, a Unitarian Universalist? <laughs> and, you know, but as I not mentioned. Not necessarily true. Not necessarily true. Same as the atheist in foxholes can art. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> um, I think it was more so in the 50s and 60s. There were, uh, there were a, a lot of atheists in UU churches, and they've, they've kind of diversified since then. Uh, and then I wanted to, and then the last reason I want to plug, because I, I was an owl teacher for 10 years when I uh, was a UU, and uh, OWL is a comprehensive sexuality education program that, <clears throat> that the Unitarian Universalist Church does, uh, which they developed in cooperation with the United Church of Christ, which is another very, it's a very liberal Christian denomination. Uh, and that's really a top-notch program, especially if you live in, a, in the South or in a place where uh, the sex education in the <coughs> sorry, where the sex education in the schools are is kind of fear and shame based, mm -hmm. um, or non-existent, and they have a really good program. And so, even if you don't want to go to the church, you might want uh, your kids to be involved with that. Sure. So, um, so that's kind of a very brief overview, but that's. Kind of, and, and that's mostly off the top of my head. So, if, you know, if if I missed something, feel free to to write in and correct us. All right.